Let's go ahead and start with this today. Last time we talked about logarithm. I will put a few properties of logarithm. I hope you guys uh, got to know those properties and memorize them. Uh, so let's continue with that. Your uh, homework or your uh, extra credit was based on proving some properties of logarithm. If you did, that's fine. If you didn't, let's go over it. So one was log of x times y equals log of x plus log of y. So this is one of the properties that we were supposed to prove uh, at home. So how do we uh, prove that? Uh, let's say, for instance, we start with, say, w equal log a of x. And this means a to the power w equal x. Yeah, this is one of the properties we talked about last time. And let's say v equal log base a of y. This also means that a to the power v equal fy. So far so good. So now let's consider Let's consider uh, V times W. Mm. Let's do that differently. Let's go from here. Let's say log X times Let's, go, let's start with log of x times y. This is the left-hand side of the equation. Yeah. Let's see what does that equal to. Well, I can replace x and y by their exponential terms. Yeah. So I can say this is log of a to the power w and did I say A? I didn't want to say A. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Log base A, base A, base A. Times uh, A to the power B. So far, so good. So we took X, we replaced it by A to the power W. We took Y, we replaced it by A to the power V, yes? And then if I multiply in two ways, two numbers, two exponential terms, and then they have the same base, the rule says we add the exponent. Yes? So that is equal to the log of A, W plus V. Yeah? And of course, the log is base A. And one of the properties we looked at last time, it says we have log base a of a to the power r that's simply equal to r. Yeah? Then this property, we can use that property, then this is nothing more than just the exponent. Yeah? So that is equal to w plus v. Yeah, because that's all we did. We rest according to the property, and we proved that last time. So this is just going to be the exponent, yeah? But what is W? We go back to W. W is log base A of X plus log base A of Y. Okay? And therefore... We're proving that property using this. Okay. Any question on that? 
No questions? All right. The second property we said to prove was instead of multiplication, we had division. So let me leave everything the same. Let me just change that property. We say y over x, y minus x. Okay? So now instead of starting with this, let's start with y over x. And let's go ahead and see what happened with that. With y over x, so this is the same thing as, again, we're going to replace y by its value, a to the power b, and then x by its value, a to the power w. That is equal to. Now when we divide, when we divide, exponential term with the same base, we subtract that exponent. So that's going to be log base a of a to the power b minus w. Okay. That is equal to, again, using that property, this is simply equal to the exponent b minus w. And that's equal, going back to the original V, that's going to be log base A of Y minus log base A of X. And with that, we proved and we showed that this and these are the set. Clear? Okay. Any questions? The third one we said we need to prove is log base a of x to the power r equal r log base a of x. So we needed to prove that. And since we already proven the multiplication rules, we can use that to prove this rule. How do I do that? Well, let's start with this. So log of a, log base a of x to the power r equal log base a. What does x to the power r mean? It means multiplying in x by itself r times. Yes? Because if this is x to the power 5, we multiply it five times. If it was x to the power 10, we multiply it 10 times. But since it's r, I don't know what r is, but it's a number, whatever it is, right? So it's going to be x times x times x, and those would be whatever r is, r times, yes? So this is how many times I'm going to put x in there. Based on the rules of uh, multiplication, we said the log of the product equal the sum of the logs. So instead of leaving it like that, I can say, well, this is log base a of x plus log base a of x plus plus log base a of x. And all of these are how many times? R times. Yep. If this happened to be 5, those will be written 5 times. If this happened to be 10, they will be written 10 times and so on. All right? Well, if you take a number and you add it to, your, to itself, let's say 10 times, it's the same thing as multiplying that number by 10. So if I say 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, how many times am I adding 2? 4 times? The same thing as saying that's 4 times 2. Isn't that correct? 
if I'm adding this number R times, this is the same thing as saying R times log base A of X. And therefore, it shows the property we are trying to show. Okay. Any questions? So those were the extra credit that we're supposed to be done. If you did it correctly, you get 15 points for uh, the test that you have. Okay, let's go ahead and apply these properties and see how these properties work. Expand the log. Expand the logarithmic expression. Let's say we have log, say x squared times y. Log x squared times y. And we want to expand it such that only one factor inside each log. Okay? Well, we can first, we can look at this as two things. Multiply, and due to the multiplication product we just looked at, we can say this is the same thing as log, say, x squared plus log of Yep, as using the uh, multiplication rule. We can also say, now we can use the exponential. We can learn it this way. Anytime you have exponent, anytime you have exponent on the argument, all of it, you can always bring the exponent to the front. That's what we just looked at. So this is the same thing as saying 2 log of x plus log of y. Yeah. So now we expanded this particular uh, uh, expression. Okay? We can use this product to evaluate the logarithm or solve an equation for logarithm. And use all of these properties to do so. What is, suppose we don't have a calculator, but we know, let's say log base 6 of 7 is something approximately equal to 1.909. Yeah? And also suppose the log Base six of five approximate for zero point nine. Yeah. Those all we give. And we're supposed to find out what is log, say thirty-five. Base six. The calculator doesn't give me log base six of thirty-five. So how do I find this? We can use the properties that we just looked. I can think of 35. We need to think of what is given to us, log of 5 and log of 7. I can think of 35 in terms of 5 and 7s. Yes. Okay. How do I change 35 to become 5s and 7s? Multiplication. I can say, instead of saying log of 35, I can say this is the same thing as log a 6 of 5 times 7. Yeah? That is a simple way of looking at it. We could also say, based on the product rule, this is going to give me log of 6 of 5 plus log 
base 6 of 7. Yeah? Do I know what log base 6 of 5 is? Yeah. Do I know what log base 6 of 7 is? Yeah. So now I can go ahead and substitute their values and figure out what is log of 35. So this is equal to 0 0.9 plus 1.09. That's equal to 1.99. So now we can say log a6 of 35 equal 1.99. What if I want log a6, a625? What do you think I should break up 625 to be? Well, since I'm only given 5 and 7, let me try to write 625 in terms of 5 and 7. Okay. What can I divide 625 by? Right? If I divide 625 by 5, what do I get? Use your calculator. So first I'm going to start with the number 625 that is the same as 5 times 125. Okay? Well, we're getting there. The 5 is okay, but the 125 is not. Yeah? What can I write 525, 125 as? In terms of fives and seven. Hmm? Can I divide that by seven? No. But I can divide it by five. It has a five in it, right? At the end, yes? So that means I can divide it by five. So 5 times what number? Give me 525. 125. 25. So now I can rewrite this as 5 times 5 times 25. But I'm still having a problem here. What is my problem? 25. I don't know anything about 25. Yes? I don't know what the law of 25 is. Do you? Okay, so... Now, again, I need to change 25 in terms of 5 and 7. What can I write it as? 5 times 5? So I can say this is equal to 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So now, I was able to rewrite 625, all of it in terms of 5, 5, 5, 5, right? I can also say this is... 5 to the power 4. Yeah? Well, now, because it is 5 to the power 4, I can go ahead and evaluate this using the given. So I can say log 625 is the same thing as log by 6 of 5 to the power 4. Yeah? What did we say we do with the exponent? Bring it to the front. So that's equal 4 times log base 6 of 5. And what is log base 6 of 5? Zero point nine. So that is 4 times 0 0.9. And that is 3.6. And we evaluated that expression using simply what? The rules of product and uh, maybe division and so on. Yeah? Any questions?
So this is one way of using uh, the product. One property I can use a calculator to figure out any log. What if I want to log log base A of R? This is change of property rules. Equals log of R divided by log of A. This is log of R divided by log of A. Now, what is the difference? The difference is this is your common log, base 10. Or we can say equal ln of R divided by ln of A. So even though your calculator does not give you log base 6 or log base 7 or any other base, you can, for instance, figure out what is log base 7 of 2 by simply saying this is ln of 2 divided by ln of 7 on your calculator. You can use the ln key. You can also use the log key. Whichever key you use will give you the same answer. Okay? So this is the uh, change of base formula to that particular uh, problem. The next portion of this is talking about graphing. We did graphing for logarithm last time. So let's go ahead and continue with basically exponential and logarithmic equations. Now we need to use all of these properties to we learned to solve equations on logarithmic form an equation in exponential form. First property of finding logarithm. If says if u and v are positive number with a uh, positive real number with a not equal to one, then log base a of u equal log base a of v this implies u equal v yes this implies u equal v and that is simply if two logs if two logs of the same base equal to each other Notice, this is base A, this is base A, a whatever the base is, as long as A is not equal to 1. And if these two bases are the same, and the logs are the same, then the argument inside the log must be the same. Yes? So, for instance, if I say log base 2 of X equal log base 2 of 3, then we know for sure that x must equal to 3. Yes? So this implies x is the same thing as 3. Okay? So now, let's go ahead and solve some equation. Solve the equation log, say, 2x equal log of x plus uh, x plus 1, let's go ahead and do that. Log of 2x equal log of x plus 1. It says find the value of x. So we need to know what x is in order for this to be true. Okay? So here's what we do. Well, we have, on one side, we have one log, yes? 
On the other side, we have one lot. We can apply the property up there. And the property says, if those two lots are the same, then what's inside must be the same. Yeah? So I can rewrite from here down to the step 2x equals x plus 1. Yeah? And then we can go ahead and use the linear equation solutions to solve this by moving the axis on one side and the constant on the other side. So if I move the x to this side, we end up with 1x equal 1. Because if I move the x to this side, it becomes a minus x. So 2x take away x is x equal the only side over here we have 1. Now one thing you need to do every time you solve logarithmic equation is check to make sure your answers make sense. Okay? Can I input, can I substitute 1 in here? Let's say if I put 1 for x, what do I get? 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 is a positive number, and it can be inside the logarithm. So for this side, 1 is good, yeah? How about this side? 1 plus 1 is 2, again, 2 is good, and therefore, this solution is correct. Okay. Now, let's take a little bit more complicated solution and solve the equation. Consider the following. It says, solve for x. There's log x equal log x plus 3 minus log x minus 1. Now here we have a prop. In order for me to use this property, I have to have one log on the left-hand side of the equation and one log on the right-hand side of the equation. But in this case, we don't. Yes, we do have one log on this side, but how many logs on this side do I have? Two. So we need to convert those two logs into one. Yeah? How do I convert those logs into one? Only way we learn is we can use the product property or the division property. Yeah? Using the product property or division. If there are plus between them, we use the product rule. If there are negative between them, we use the division rule. What do I have between them? Net. So that means we're going to use the division rule. What does the division rule say? It says if we have log, say, let me write it over here so it doesn't look part of the problem. Let's say log x over y equal log of x minus log of y. Yeah? So if I can rewrite this then, instead of a minus, I can put them together into one log and make them division. Yes? So let's rewrite this. So that's going to be log of x equal one big log fraction, yes? What do I divide now? The first part of the log, or the first one, divided by the second one. What's the first one? x plus 3, x minus 1. Yeah? Using the division property. Now the next step I look at and I see, oh, we have one log on this side. We have one log on this side. Now I can use that property on top 
and take away the logs and say, what's inside the log must equal to chuck. So now I can say then x equal x plus 3, x minus 1. Well, now we need to solve this. We have to use techniques from algebra to solve this. Well, this is like a fraction equal a fraction, right? First, we cross multiply. And then to cross multiply, we multiply this part by that, this part by that. So we have x times x minus 1 equal x plus 3. Yeah? x times x minus 1 equal 1 times x plus 3, which is x plus 3. So now we're going to expand this, and let's see what we end up with. x times x, that's x squared minus x times 1 is x equal x plus 3. So far so good. This is a quadratic. To solve a quadratic equation, we bring everything to one side, and the other side, we make it zero. So let's do that. So on this side, we have x squared minus x. Now we take this x, we move it to the other side. It becomes also minus x. And then we take the plus 3, we move it to the other side. It is minus 3 equals 0. Yeah? Let's simplify this a little bit. So we have x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. How do I solve this? Well, to solve it, since this is a quadratic, we have to factor. Yeah? So we have to put it in terms of product. So how do I factor that? So I need to look for two numbers. When I multiply them, I get a negative 3. Yeah? But when I add them, I get a negative 2. What are those numbers? Let's take it one step at a time. What two numbers? Give me all the two numbers you can multiply together to get a 3. 1 and 3. Anything else? So we're going to start with 1 and 3. Yes? But the, the product is simply negative, correct? So that means one of them has to be negative. I don't know which one is negative, but I'm going to put all of the uh, scenarios together. It could be a 1 is negative, right? And negative 1 times 3 is 3. But it could also be that 3 negative, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3 as well, right? But here is the other restriction I'm looking for. When I put them together, I get a negative 2. So which part of this scenario give me a negative 2? Ne negative 3, yes? So now these are my two numbers. These are my two numbers that I need to put in. Yes? So here what we go. So we have x. The first number is a plus 1. Yeah? And then we have x. The second number is negative 3, and we factor. Okay? Now, what do I have? We either have this number times that number. We have this number times that number equals 0. Yes? So either one of them has to be a 0. Yes? Or maybe both. If this number is 0, what is the value of x that make this equal to 0? That's all. So I'm going to take this portion and say x 
plus one equals zero. Yeah. To solve for x, we move one to the other side. Yeah. That means x equal negative one. This is one possible solution. And I still say possible because we haven't finished yet. Yeah. What is the other possible solution? Well, not this one to be zero, this one to be zero, yeah? So let's do the same thing we did. So we have x minus three equals zero, x equals three. That is solution number, or possible solution number two, yeah? So far so good? Okay, how do I check which one is a solution, if any, or maybe both? I'm just gonna go back and take its, uh, each value, right? And I'm gonna replace it in the original equation and then see if it makes sense or not. Okay, if I take this log over here and I put a negative one in there for x, what's the problem with this scenario? Okay, problem is, Log functions do not take negative numbers. Another way, I cannot say log of minus one. That is not possible. Yeah? Even though if I take minus one, I put it here, it's okay, right? Because negative one plus three is two, but it's not okay in every one of them. Yes? It's only okay in this one, but it's not okay here. Why? Because if I put a negative one here, I get a log of negative one. Even the calculator will tell you an error. Okay? So therefore, this solution is not acceptable. This solution is not acceptable. Let's see if the second one is okay. Can I say log of three, first of all? Yes, that's one. So we have log of three equal. In here, three plus three is six, yeah? So that's log of six minus, did I say six and I put two? Log of three minus one is two. Notice all the numbers inside the logs are simply positive numbers. They're acceptable, all of them, yes? All you have to do is make sure that these are equal to each other. Well, the subtraction is basically dividing the argument, yes? And six divided by two is three, that's your two. So you always have to go back, even though you may get an answer, but you have to go back and check, does that answer make sense or not? If it doesn't make sense, you have to uh, drop it. Mom, one important thing about the log, you can't have zero and you can't have a negative number. So anytime solution, you solve an equation, you end up with a log zero, then it is not acceptable yes so this is something you want to uh, pay attention to when you're solving those particular equations i think i'm gonna stop here for for this and next time we will continue with the logarithmic equation and it looks like let's see no, we still have some time before the next test. All right? And that's it for today. I'll see you back here on perhaps Monday. <laughs>